Well, to help answer these questions, I'm joined by Joy Bolamwini, who is a researcher at MIT Media Lab and founder of the Algorithmic Justice League, and Albert Fox Kahn, the founder and executive director of the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project at the Urban Justice Center. Thank you both so much for joining me here today. Joy, I'll start with you. You said in 2016 that algorithms, like a virus, can spread bias on a massive scale at a rapid pace. So, Joy, as we look at contact tracing, other forms of tracking in this pandemic, on top of surveillance, during these protests, who exactly is at risk of facing discrimination? So what we're seeing right now is the deployment of surveillance technologies meant to keep the public safe. But the reality is many of these technologies, the way that they're developed, actually have bias against marginalized communities and particularly communities of color. And so while you might be saying, okay, these technologies are going to be beneficial, we continue to have study after study that shows um, technologies like facial recognition fell more often on people with darker skin, fell more often on women, fell more often on youthful faces or older adults. And even if these technologies did work as they are marketed to work, we then have to ask what happens with that surveillance because it can lead to chilling effects, right? Where you're not exercising your First Amendment rights because if you go outside, your face might be snatched and used in ways where you end up um, being targeted because you are trying to speak up for what is right. And so in a country, right, where we're still grappling with racism, you do not have the presumption of innocence as a person of color, as a black person, when you are said to be suspicious or you are said to be criminal, the consequences can be grave as we've seen. Yeah, and to try to address some of these issues, Albert, you started the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project, or STOP, with that belief that surveillance tech imposes a threat to civil rights. So what does the history of police tracking tell us about the risks associated with surveilling amid things like protest? Yeah, I mean, in New York City, we've seen surveillance of communities of color since before the United States even existed. Back in the colonial era, we had lantern laws that forced uh, black and uh, Native American New Yorkers to carry a lantern on their body whenever they went out after dark as a way to surveil them and monitor them and make sure they didn't rise up against uh, colonists. But you know, in more recent times, we've seen some of these high tech tools being used to target people simply for expressing their First Amendment rights, for gathering for peaceful protests, uh, targeting the Muslim community, uh, simply for uh, those people who go and practice their faith. And in, you know, this city and in so many other American cities, surveillance has become a tool of control. It has become a way to, you know, strip these communities of the standing and the rights that they deserve. And, you know, thankfully, in recent years, we've started to see the tide turn uh, as the public is pushing back against these abusive technologies and the way they not just threaten communities of color and the black community in particular, but the way they undermine the promise of being an open and democratic society. Yeah, that historical context is so important. But Joy, this is what you're working on with your research. So how do you recommend tech companies adjust their efforts to ensure that AI or other tracking systems are not discriminatory? Well, the first thing is exercising the precautionary principle. Oftentimes, when we're thinking about the tech industry, we rush forward, right, and we apologize later. When we're thinking about lives, real people's lives, we can't afford to test later technologies that are being deployed now. And so what I recommend is before you even deploy a technology in the first place, ask, is this technology necessary? Who's at risk for the harms of these technologies? Technologies. So should we have this technology in the first place? The other component is if there are a set of technologies that we agree to as a society to that makes sense, we need three things. The first is affirmative consent. People should have a choice about how these technologies are used. The next is meaningful transparency. We need to understand the capabilities and the limitations of these systems. And then finally, we need continuous oversight. It's not as if you try to make a perfect system and deploy it. We know that as these technologies go out into the world, different ways in which they can fail, different ways in which harms can be propagated are revealed. And so until we have affirmative consent, meaningful transparency, and continuous oversight, pressing pause, taking the precautionary 
evolutionary principle. So we're not deploying uh, technologies, maybe well-intentioned, but nonetheless harmful without uh, real accountability and uh, a move towards equity. Yeah, and there's also proposed legislation. Albert, we'll end on this. In New York, the proposed POST Act would force the NYPD to inform protesters at least of how they're being tracked. So how might that affect the ability for marginalized groups to protest? Yeah, one of the most shocking things here in New York is that we have no way to know what surveillance systems our police department are, is purchasing. We know how money is spent on schools. We know how money is spent on roads. But if you are asking how money is being spent to spy on those who are simply gathering to protest against injustice, we don't know. And the NYPD has taken millions of dollars in federal funding and private grants without any oversight by elected officials. But the POST Act, the Public Oversight of Surveillance Technology Act, is a chance to change that, to follow the lead of you know, cities like Oakland and San Francisco and to say that policing must be accountable to the public that it supposedly serves. And surveillance it should never be allowed unless the police are telling the public how they're being tracked and telling them how that information is being shared. Anything less than that is antithetical to democracy itself. All right, Joy and Albert, thank you so much for your time and insight here today. That's Joy Bolamwini, founder of the Algorithmic Justice League, and Albert Fox Khan, the founder of the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project.